Hello everybody and welcome back to Benjamin Magnus. Hopefully teaches you to play Europa Universalis 4. Last episode, uh, we went over a lot of diplomatic options. We uh, we talked to our vassals. Our, our This is a, just a normal vassal. This is a march. Which, uh, we formed the personal union with Lithuania, which again, that happens through events with Poland and Lithuania. Uh, and there's a few other events involving... Austria, Hungary, uh, and Burgundy in France, and a couple other areas. Uh, there's a couple event-based personal union things that are that have a slightly. Some of them have a random component. Some of them don't. But uh, just know normally personal unions don't happen by themselves. You you generally have to force them in a, in an issue, and uh, that's something we'll probably go over much later. But anyhow, we went over diplomacy. We formed our alliances. Uh, we we made royal marriages. And actually, right here is, uh, huh, interesting. Claiming the throne is a cost spelling to me. That's very interesting. I didn't realize that. Is Bohemia in a... Wow. I could claim the throne to Bohemia right now. That might be... that. That's lucky. So, if right now, I'm looking at this disputed succession... So, right now, Bohemia has no legal heir, and I have more prestige for, than them, so I could claim that the throne to Bohemia is mine. But, uh, that, the, the tricky thing... Hmm... The tricky thing about doing anything inside the Holy Roman Empire, which Bohemia is not only a part of, but is a powerful part of, is that if you declare... Because you have to... You actually have to go to war with someone and war for it. Hmm. This is very interesting. Hey, why don't we do it just for shits and giggles? So now we have the claim the throne, just so I could show you how it works. I have the claim the throne CB on Bohemia. And what we're going to do is we're going to wait uh, for, you have to wait like a month, I think, between you before, between when we can send diplomats. So let's wait to December 12th. And then we're going to take a look at something. Let's just wait. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, uh, so I can't declare war on them to claim the throne because we're, we're allied. That means I'd have to dissolve the alliance with them first. So let's go ahead and do that. We're doing a lot of diplomacy this time around. A lot of diplomacy. Let's also, just in case... I don't think I'm going to be able to do this, but just in case we're going to try. Because normally when you declare war on anybody inside the Holy Roman Empire, the Emperor comes in too. So this might be a, um, a foolhardy thing to try. But we're going to... We're going to give it a... We're going to give it a shot, because they're at war right now and distracted. So, I can claim the throne if we take the capital of Prague, if we can siege down and take the capital of Prague. Now, the issue is, is that if you, if you declare war on somebody, uh, on a state in the Holy Roman Empire, it automatically brings in the emperor, who is Austrian. Austria is very strong. And it also brings in any of Austria's allies. And that doesn't show up on here, so we'd have to go look. That would bring in Hungary. That would allow them to call in Hungary, the Palatinate, Ra Ravensburg, Genoa, and Savoy. So that would allow them to do all of those things, which would be a very bad idea for me. It would be a very bad. I would never be able to fight an alliance that strong. Whenever you're declaring war, you have to be very, very careful. Now I, I was 99% sure that this was going to be like this, and I wasn't going to be able to dec declare war and actually take the capital, but I really wanted to show you how, because because that was that was an int that was it was very interesting that 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 happened because you know claiming thrones and creating your own personal unions happens very rarely, very rarely. But I wanted to show you it. So if I was playing this game just just for me, or if I was playing it as as like um, a serious series for the channel, I would not have done that because I was 99% sure I would not have been able to press it. But because they didn't have an heir, and I had more prestige than them, and we had a royal marriage, I was allowed to say, Bohemia, I, I have rightful claim on your throne. 
And then what happens is if you actually want to, you have to press the issue, you have to go declare war on them and beat them in combat. And it would be my, my, cha my alliance chain, which is everything right here, versus his alliance chain, which it would be, so I would fight Bohemia, Cilicia, because that's a Bohemian, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a Bohemian uh, vassal. Allied. Yep, Cilicia is a vassal. says right here, has a following vassal, Cilicia. So I'd have to fight Bohemia. I'd have to fight Cilicia, no, which only has 2,000 men, so not that strong. Um, I would also have to fight Austria. And then Austria is considered a co-belligerent. They will be able to call in their own allies. So the Platinate, which is right here. Ravensburg, which is right there. That's all small guys. Genoa, which is right there. And Savoy, who's a little bit bigger right here. Wasn't Hungary on there? Hungary, right at the top of the list. And Hungary. So that's actually not... That, that's that's. I think they're a little bit... They may be 15 or 20% stronger than me. So that's not that bad of odds. That would be a hell of a war, though. An absolute knockdown, drag out hell of a war. And I... Hmm. Part of me wants to do it just for poops and giggles. You know what? Let's do this. Let's call this the personal union and combat episode. Let's save it. And then we can we can do this and then we can just save scrub and go back and you know cuz I'm I'm almost positive this would I would die. I'm going to die doing this. But we can always try. Let's let's uh we can make our military larger, but we have so few men as it is. Let's get our let's get our people together. Are you still at war? There's he's still at war with Brandenburg and Saxony. So Bohemia is actually distracted right now and getting its butt kicked. Hmm. This little skull means these armies are taking attrition. That means men are dying just standing around. So un we have this we have this until they get an heir, I believe. Ooh, you know what? But I also have a truce with them because I broke our alliance. Fifty-four. That's five years. So if they don't get well Hmm. I guess we'll I guess we'll wait and see. And while we're waiting, we can do we can do some other things. I'm not playing this completely, you know, very optimally, but stuff happens. So we have this little looming disaster button pop up. It's telling me that the aristocrats of my country have become too powerful and they will stage a coup in 1457. That's eight years from now. And it's because they have too much influence. Now, there's no way to lower my interest through my, their um, influence. Oh my. I'd make their... Can get some free points right now, though. Hmm. Hmm. This is this is so rare to get the 150 points. I would lose their. I would, I would gain some power points, but I would lose their loyalty. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this because we're gonna be messing around with them a little bit in a hot second. And then we can go to the Brugers here, the traders, and they are a little low on loyalty. So I can grant them a Monopoly Charter at the cost of 5 Prestige, and I can give them a little bit more loyalty so they're happier. Now we still have this coup. The only way to lower their influence is to wait for modifiers to run off. Robber Barons won't let, will, will fall off in 1463. But they're going to have a coup before that. So now the only way to reduce their influence is to reduce the amount of land they control. And that's dangerous. So, we have to go to a province, and we have to remove it from their control. Red is red is these guys. So, and the percentages is uh, basically how powerful that, that county is. So, like, this is a very large county, so it, it gives them a lot of control. So this is a smaller one, so it does not as much. So, I'm going to take uh, Piemishiel here, and I'm going to remove it from them. So there we go. So that took care of the coup. 
Now, they don't have enough influence to have a coup on me. But now they're also a little less loyal because I took land away from them. Hmm. If I could get Bohemia as a PU under me this early on in the game, on, my, on a tutorial series, that'd be really interesting. Oh, uh, so I can go here. So now I'm taking uh, my manpower recovery speed is down by 10%. And my land maintenance modifier, how much it costs to keep my troops up, is up by 10%. Because they're not very loyal. Uh, I don't think there's anything I could do right now to do. I think I just have to wait on that. I think I just have to suck that up for now. Because anything that gives them more influence would put me right back into the problem I had before. So we're just going to have to wait. Alright, well that was a, that was a good uh, attempt to show you how estates work. We have a little bit of provincial unrest over here. Let's see what's it being caused by. Um, controlled by the nobility, non accepted culture, intolerance. So basically, because the nobility co uh, controls it and it's a different culture and different religion, they're a little unhappy. But we could do something to fix that. We can take some of our troops here. And why don't we, because we're, we're a little low on money now, why don't we lower this down to about half? To save a little bit of money. So now their morale's about half. Yeah, this this yellow means they don't have... It, it means their maintenance is down. Uh, now the unrest is down by just a little bit. So as you can see, uh, down towards the bottom there, friendly troops minus 1.09. Stationing troops in a county can or province, whatever you want to call it, can reduce the amount of unrest in that province. And it's based on, I think there's, it's a hard cap of four or five unrest points. So you can't just put 100,000 troops in a province and everybody will be happy. But you can put some troops there and I could actually lower that by increasing my morale. But a lot of things in this game are just a balancing act. It's just, do I want more money or do I want that unrest to go down? And right now I think I'd rather have a little bit of both. I want a little bit of money and a little bit of unrest reduction. And you can actually see that uh, there's a rebel faction, which is separatists from this region, are starting to gain a little bit of a foothold. Uh, let's see. The faction base has 3.4% chance of increasing their progress by 10% each month. So there's basically a 3.5% chance that at the end of the month, this will go from 10 to 20. If this goes all the way up to 100, then the rebels, uh, the rebels fire. And rebels, rebel troops spawn in your country, and you have to fight them militarily. All right, cool. Krakow is now the set seat of a new cardinal. He's loyal to Poland. So Poland, Krakow right here, my capital, has a cardinal. He doesn't show up on the map or anything like that. But if you go to the papal view, and you search by number of cardinals here, you can see that Poland now has one. And I believe that gets me more papal influence, too, from controlled cardinals. So, yeah, I get a little bit more papal influence because I control that cardinal. Very cool. We have a new pop-up as well. You can invest in a new technology. So if we click on this, like I said before, uh, click on any pop-up. It'll generally bring you to the correct screen you need to be on to uh, to go over, whatever, to fix whatever issue is, is, it, is at hand. And now, so you can see, diplomacy and military are still grayed out. But this is an activate, but admin is now an activatable button. So if you hover over here, and say it'll cost you, cost 568 admin power to go from tech 3 to tech 4. I have 585. I have enough, so I can click on this. And because I'm one of the first nations in the world to do it, I get a little bonus. I get production efficiency, so goods produced in my country up for 10 per, up by 20% for 3 years. and get a little bit less corruption. My corruption is already down, so that's not a big deal for me. But we are going to go ahead and take that. We have advanced to level four admin tech, and that unlocked a building for us, which is pretty cool. This is telling me I have buildings I can build. So now, before these were all red except for defense for for the castle, now we can build a church. And as you can see, the church modifies the amount of tax you gain in a province by forty percent. So if we click on this, it brings up the build inter 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 interface here, and what you could do is you can sort. I think you could sort it by different, you know. But clicking any of these, it sorts it by name, by number of free building slots, by who controls it, uh, by what trade good is there, uh, how much does it cost. Or you could sort it by the value of the improvement. So, if I built a church in Krakow, every month I would get 0.26 extra ducats. 
because the church increases the amount of tax here by 40%. So I'm going to go, you can click, you can do it here. And I'm going to build two of these. I'm going to do the next one in Khalees too. I can click up there and it'll do it. And then everything else gets read out because I don't have enough ducats to do another one. But once those build, and you can see it'll take about a year, exactly a year actually, to, to construct those, I will get more money from taxes. So it's going to take this number and it's going to modify it by an additional 40%. Hungary fabricated claims. So Hungary and, uh, yeah, it was Hungary did it twice, I believe. They fabricated a claim here and they fabricated a claim there. Very interesting. That is very interesting indeed. So war might be brewing with Hungary. And now we have another pop-up. Land technology research has been useless. Several prominent men in our country are pointing out that the path we are going uh, when it comes to army research is utterly foolish and will amount to nothing. The demand that we stop the current approach and stick with what good enough, uh, what was good enough for our fathers. So that we have three options. They have a point. I lose 50 power points. I can ignore them and I lose 10 prestige. Or uh, I have a third option. Normally, there would only be two options here, but there is a third option. We have that any green ones are granted by your ruler's personality traits. So, because my guy is a scholar, and these guys are talking about scholarly pursuits, I have another option. So I could lose five prestige, and one of my theologians dies. That guy just died. But that was pretty much the best thing for me. Uh, we, have an, we have more available, so I'm going to go ahead and add this guy in. Uh, I want that extra power point per month. And national tax modifier, 10%. So he costs one ducat to pay him, but then he's going to modify my tax modifier by 10%. So it's actually going to be a little bit lower than that because his bonus is going to offset what's costing to, to hire him, which is pretty cool. Let's see if we still have... Oh, new pope already. The pope died and was replaced by another pope. Uh, so I'm, I'm really eyeballing this because it's going to be really, really interesting. We have... I don't know. Austria's military is really, really, really strong. Early game. But so is mine. And Bohemia is getting smashed right now. And I don't need to beat everybody else. I only need to beat Bohemia. If I take their capital, I think I have to take their capital and get like 60% war score? Or something like that? So, I don't know. It'd be very interesting. Anyway, we're going to keep going on because in four years... We're going to, the, the uh, truce between me and Bohemia, I auto got a truce because I dissolved our alliance. That's going to fall off, and then we're going to see if he, ha if he doesn't have an heir, we can try to press the, th for, press the, our claim on the throne for Bohemia, which would be awesome, because that would mean I would control, as Poland, I would control Mazovia, Moldavia, Lithuania, Bohemia, and Silesia, because, uh, you can have junior partners of junior partners. So Silesia would answer to Bohemia, who would answer to Poland, so they would, like, de facto answer to me. That would be super cool. These guys like me, which is great. What is my current mission? I don't remember what I took, because I did it off-screen. Ah, take Chelmno. That's this province right here. Still, They still have good allies. And they would all join them. Livonian order is kind of like, eh. Hungary doesn't like me. Denmark doesn't like me, so they would definitely join in. I'm super excited to see if this Bohemian thing works out for me. It may, it may not. And what we should probably do before it hits is increase it, because we're capped out on manpower right now. We can increase the size of our military. So let's see, what do we got here? We have eight infantry and four ca and three cavalry. Uh, and you generally can't, you, you can't have, uh, for a normal nation, more than 50% of your army made up of Cav. Cav is very expensive, so you generally don't want a ton of it. And we, and me and, as Poland, we do have a ton of it, because I, I think, I don't think we have it yet, but we, eventually we do get bonuses to cavalry combat ability later on. I think it's right here. Winged Hussars, cavalry combat ability, plus... 33% in cavalry to infantry ratio, plus 10%, so we can have more cav in our army. Some of the other nations, like the, the Tangri nations, they can have, like, 100% ratio, which means their entire army can be cavalry, which is very strange. It's very odd to play like that. But why don't we go ahead 
And there's a couple ways to increase the size of your military. Well, here, let's do it super simple first. If I click this button right here, it'll recruit, it'll auto recruit a, a regiment and then auto merge it with this army. If I don't move this army, if I do move this army that would that regiment will just walk into that province and hang out there. So Bohemia definitely looks like they're getting slapped around in this war a little bit. That's good for me. The longer Bohemia is at war, it means the weaker they're going to be when it comes time to attack them. And their capital is in farmland, which is good for me, because when it comes to warfare, terrain matters. Ah, there we go. So that one regiment was recruited and then auto-merged with this regiment, right, with this army right here. So that now we have 8 and 3 and 8 and 3, which is pretty cool. I think I would like to increase... I could go up to 32 regiments, and I'm at 22, though. So I can definitely increase the size of my military even more. The thing is, though, is that militaries are expensive. Very expensive. So what we could do is we could lower the army maintenance to make a little bit more money for now. And because I don't think it's going to happen, I don't think anybody's going to clear war on me, I'm going to uh, mothball the forts so I'm not paying their upkeep. A base castle costs one ducat per month to keep up. If it's mothballed, it costs half a ducat. So I went from three to 1.5, because one, two, three... Well, actually, this is my capital. That one doesn't count. No, it does count, because there is a castle there. So yeah, so I went from three ducats from these three castles to 1.5. So I'm making a little bit more now. You can also tech up on Diplotech. So that's going to give us trade range plus 10. So that means we can trade with um, areas further out. That's fine. The fabricating claims, they've already done that. Also, lets me build a marketplace, which increases my trade power. And Muscovy has announced me as their rival. So Muscovy is, is looking at me across Lithuania, shaking their fist. Very cool. If we have a military tech up on guys when we're fighting them, that, mean, that, that means we're going to be a lot more powerful than them. Which would be pretty cool. So let's go ahead and recruit another Eastern Knight. And then we'll speed up and let this go. Speed 4 is good. Oh, auto merge. There we go. Then we can grab another one. It's generally pretty good to have an even number of cav. Uh, just because they usually get split between flanks. So if you have an even number, then say, say one, say two or, or four. Then one regiment would go to one side and one regiment would go to the other side. Or, you know, two and two. Four and four, three and three, whatever you, you may have. Um, the way that combat works in this game, generally cavalry is more powerful early game than it is late game. So we are definitely going to have a good amount of cavalry right now. But something has come up. The Renaissance has occurred. So since the 14th century, the wealthy and powerful in the Italian uh, city-states, uh, let's see, have been patronizing arts and scholars willing to explore the old Roman and Greek societies of their forefathers. As a cultural movement, the Renaissance utterly encompasses most of the region and has a profound impact on literature, art, philosophy, and music. Blah, 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 blah. Flavor text. But it means that our first institution is hit. So let's take a look at our institution map mode. And you can see the Renaissance started in Naples, down here in Italy. And all these hashed out areas are spots that ooh, I just told my men to move all the cross hatched or, or you know shaded areas are provinces that that institution is spreading in so if we click on say our capital click on open and close institution you can see that every month we gain uh, 0.27 acceptance of this institution now it naturally will spread faster in areas it's close to. So it's present here, and say it's spreading to Rome 10 times faster than it's spreading in Krakow. And there's all these modifiers you can see on the screen that shows you how it's spreading. Now there, are, there is one thing that you can do to jumpstart an institution in your land. What you can do is you can develop your country. Your, 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 your country. You can take a province, you can click these buttons, and what I'm going to do is I think I'll do it in Krakow just once to show you. 
because it's 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 kind of expensive. Every development in Krakow is 79 points. So I'll use admin. So right now it's accepted at 0% because we've had it paused and it increases at 0.27 per month. If we develop Krakow a little, the total development of the country goes up because we did admin, total taxes went up. But also you can see this bar started to go up, increased by 4%. And that knocked two solid years off the amount of time it'll take to accept this. So it went from taking, what, uh, eight, 1480? Oh God, decades. So I knocked two years off the decades long process here. And this actually went up a little bit quicker too. So what you can do is say, if you're, well, let's take a look at institution map mode here. So, so let's say you are, playing is the Mamlux and it hits up here and you're or, and you're you're somewhere far away where it's not spreading to you and you have to wait for it to spread from province to 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 province to, province to get to you it's going to take all this time and you're like I really want this right now you can you can take all of your points you can dump them into the development of a province and you can jump start it in your land that is a very valid thing to do especially if you're not if you're playing somewhere it's going to take a very long time to get to or you're just on the opposite side of the planet, like, if, or if you're in, you're in like, Af West or Central or Africa, or you're off in Asia somewhere, or you're, I mean, it's in the Americas, it's a little different, you're actually not allowed to do it if you're in the Americas, but that's how you could jumpstart an institution in your land. Now, for me, I'm just going to wait for it to come to me. It's going to spread pretty quickly, uh, let's see, let's look at Prague. Oh, it's not, it's not going to show me, show province. Oh, it's actually really slow there. So it's going to spread uh, pretty quickly up through Italy, and it, I don't think it's going to take that long to get to me. So I don't think I'll be jump-starting it. I might coax it along just a little bit, but it's not a big deal. That does segue us to the next item, though, and that is why do you need to embrace these institutions? Now, if you look at tech penalty, right, technology right here, see, institution tech penalty 0%. The longer you go without accepting an institution, the higher this number gets. And it goes all the way up to 50%, which means instead of 538 military power points, we'd be looking at closer to 800 military power points to embrace the next technology. So it makes getting, uh, you know, keeping up on tech very difficult if you fall behind on those institutions. But because there's no penalty right now, because the institution just hit, we can still take military with no issue. And there's all in this number right here, that's also something I should mention real quick. Uh, that's an ahead penalty. If you grab a, try to grab a technology that is ahead of time, it costs a little bit more. So you can get tech, you can get like techs up on your neighbors, but it costs just a little bit more. With that, I think we're going to end this episode right here. I was planning on this to being a warfare episode, but a lot of things involving the, the personal unions and uh, some diplomacy things and the institution stuff hit well, those things kind of just piled up and i really wanted to give you a good overview of what was happening so uh we're gonna we're gonna leave it here maybe i'll play off screen just a little bit so we can get to some conflict though thank you for watching everybody don't forget to like comment subscribe if you've enjoyed and i'll see you all next time